Previously on Get The down. Bill. Pat Hadley. Oh, my God. Greg, what the hell happened here? Was this Hadley? If you want to get to her, go through the kid, brother. Both of you get in the van. on the operation we mounted at the cash and carry with Jim Carver, the one that was blown out. Pat Hadley is still on the loose. So who called in? June Ackland. She and Jim returned Burns' van after the stakeout. What does she have to say? Well, that's the thing. There's no sign of her. Or Jim. They've completely disappeared. Thank you. We found their radios and their mobiles all over the floor. Safe door was open, so it suggests robbery, but there's no sign of any forced entry into it. Do you reckon this is Hadley's work? Well, probably, given the weapon and the connections. So Greg Burns stitched you up and gave you bogus information about this cash and carry robbery? Yes, Gov. That one never happened. This one did, right at the same time. Right, I'm going to get uniform, get down to Greg's flat, see what we can find. I'll go with you. No, I want you to get over to St Hugh's. I want you to interview Bruce Burns as soon as he comes round, because if Hadley is behind this, it's likely that he's taken them. It's locked. Don't waste your energy, June. Save it for the right time. Greg hasn't got the balls for this. Not on his own. Andy must have put him up to it. What, shooting his father and kidnapping us? Well, my guess is Bruce was just unlucky. He was at the wrong place at the wrong time, and the same goes for us. Oh. They must be into something bigger. Andy wasn't there, was he? He must have other fish to fry. <laughs> So what do you think's going on? I don't know. Look, if it was Greg on his own, I reckon we could talk him down. But if he takes us to Hadley, that's another matter. Why? What would he do? Well, he won't like it. I know that much. <laughs> hey! June's last day. <laughs> End of an era. Back and... Are you signing them? No, not yet. Is this everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and some of them will be here. We just want you to bring them over. She's probably saying goodbye to the police staff. Once I'll you get that lot in the canteen going, going, they don't stop. <laughs> no, 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 it's all right. Uh, have you got anything else? Well, I'm sure people will help out here. You know, it sounds like all hands at the pump. All right, bye. What's happened? They reckon that June's been kidnapped. What? Yeah, there's been a shooting down at Burns Haulage on Tedder Lane. And June Atland and Jim Carver were on the scene, but now they're missing. That's Jim's Manchester case. He's been shot. Bruce Burns, the uh, owner of the Haulage firm, and the DCI is looking for two individuals, his son, Greg, and this Pat Hadley. Now, I'm getting back to the Nick. So if anyone wants to help, you can meet me down there. All right? Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, what's happening? What's going on? Uh, there's been an incident. What do you mean, an incident? Well, a member of the public has been shot, and June was first on the scene, and now no one seems to know where she is. This is my second retirement you've screwed up. You must have a talent for it. I knew it was too good to be true. What was? Your new life in Manchester, you know, all sorted and perfect. What's going on? Somebody arguing. It could be Hadley. That's not exactly what I had in mind either, Jim. I'm sorry. I really am. I'm... I'm sorry for this and I am sorry for everything. How are you feeling, Mr Burns? Like a horse. 
kick to me. You're very lucky to be alive. You lost a lot of blood. Who shot you? Pat Hadley. Was Greg there? Hadley was going through the safe, and I grabbed him. I didn't know he had a gun. The next thing I know, the whole room explodes. So Pat Hadley was on his own? Yes. Well, we can't find either of them at the moment. Have you any idea where they might have gone? I told you. Hadley was on his own. Any news? Uh, no. I'm sorry, Rod. The uh, victim of the shooting doesn't remember seeing anyone. Sam, did you find anything? I I'm sorry, Rod, but I need to discuss this with my colleagues first. Because you've got something? Because we need to confer. Oh, excuse me. Roger, can you look after Rod in the soft interview room? Right, Gov. This way, Rod. We didn't find anything related to Jim and June at Greg's flat. But we did find Greg's mobile, so the car had gone very far. Bruce says it's Hadley and claims he can't remember if Greg was there. And do we believe him? Frankly, Gov, no. He was too adamant that Greg has no part in this. Well, maybe that's the parent, you know, refusing to see what's in front of his nose. No, there's more to it than that, I'm sure. None of this seems complete. And there's no point in tracing Hadley's phone because he's always changing it. We found drug dealing paraphernalia in the flat. Well, that would suit Hadley's form. With his previous and the intelligence from Manchester has him down as a middling dealer. But where does the armed robbery fit? Well, at a guess, I'd say that Hadley has the contacts and Greg showed him where the money was. Do you think they're setting up a deal? It would fit. Well, if they're lining up a drugs deal, what do they want June and Jim for? God. Police! Police in the van! They were at my dad's. What the hell am I going to do with you? Get out! You two! You need to get your head straight, Greg. You need to pull your weight. See if the keys are in the car. They're in the cab. They're a car! What are you doing? He needs help! Here are the keys. Get the money and the drugs. Get in the back, Carver. Move it! Ambulance. Leave him. He's dead. Get in the car. Is he dead? For real? Just drive, Greg. I said drive! Get over here! Move! <laughs> That's why I've told them to leave him here. So what do we know? Well, Tony's talking to some witnesses. What you got, Tony? Right, witnesses say they saw six people. Two of them, one male, one female in uniform. So we can assume that is June and Jim. Three and four could be Hadley and Greg Burns. Five, got dead on the floor here. Six ran off in that direction. Description? He's young, dark-haired. Wearing a very distinctive light and dark blue jacket, number 24 on the back, now like a speedway jacket. And what happened to the second vehicle? All they saw was a silver 4x4. Four four. Right, get it circulated. And a dog unit deployed. If this six man is still on foot, I want him found. Yes, sir. Zero script from 128. We're chasing a male IC1 wearing a blue emblem 24 jacket. Received 128. The suspect may be armed. Oh, please stop! Stop! Louis! Stop! I said stop! Stop! 
Stop right there! Stop where you are! Look! I don't want the hassle, right? I ain't done nothing. What are you running for? No, I told you I don't want the hassle. When a policeman tells you to stop, you stop. Keep your hands up. You can stop because you match the description of someone who's wanted a connection with a shooting. You understand? Yeah, but I don't know nothing. All right. You've got no problem asking me a few questions. What's your name? Stop struggling. Uh, Reg, get the zipping cuffs on him, man. Uh, well, yes, he could have had a weapon on him. Well, he didn't, did he? No, but he could have done. I got him, didn't I? A man was shot dead, Mr. Burns. Now, if you're trying to protect your son, it's too late. Tell me what you know. The reason I went back to the office was because I just discovered Greg had taken ten grand out of the bank. Was Greg at the office? Bruce? When I got there, he was emptying the safe as well. Was that Greg and Pat Hadley? Or Greg on his own? Greg on his own. I asked him what the hell was going on. He said he was borrowing some money. I told him to put it back. He refused. I reached out for it and... There's a gun in his hand. I went to take it. Bang. It went off. It went off? Or he shot you? We've heard Solomon shot. He matches the description of the suspect that we're looking for in connection with the shooting. How are you spelling Solomon? S O. I think my ribs are broke. S O L M A N, Sarge. How did that happen? He did it. <laughs> I'm a neck. Reg, back me up. This ain't got nothing to do with me, has it? Sarge, I saw nothing that would have caused that. Well, you two together the whole time? Yeah, well, pretty much. I got there a couple of seconds after Lewis. Is this him? Yeah. Are you aware that two officers have been taken? Hang on a minute, sir. I think this man needs the FMA. Look, Sarge, he resisted arrest, but that's got nothing to do with me. I'm no way. Look, if he knows what happened, he's taking Jim and Jim. We need to know. Oh, I think this man needs medical attention. No one's going to question him until he gets it. Reg, get an ambulance now. So what the hell happened here? Nothing happened, sir. The description came over on the radio and I arrested him. Look, if there's a delay in questioning this suspect because of something you did, PC Hardy, you are in deep trouble. Give me the keys. Them. Where are we? Warehouse. I can see that. What goes on here? Nothing. We just use it to park up. We? Who's that? You and your dad? You haven't even asked if he's okay, have you? Well, why should he care? He shot him, didn't he? Yeah. You think I planned that? That was an accident. You had the gun. He grabbed the gun off me. Oh, it's his fault, Sonny. Couldn't possibly be yours, could it? What? Give us an hand! Handle Hadley, you take Burns. No, I am not putting my life at risk to settle some score of yours. We have to. No, we don't have to. I've got the dead man's back off. We'll use it. Oh, he's going to be back. Is he fit to be released? He's got massive bruising on his neck and ribs. Serious bleeding to his knees and elbows. Who arrested him? I did. He's a haemophiliac. You cannot treat a haemophiliac like that. Like what? I didn't do anything. He tried to run and I arrested him. If he's a haemophiliac, shouldn't he be on medication? He's a mild haemophiliac. They're not medicated all the time. He says he told you. He didn't. Well, he says he did, and that you used your asp on his ribs and then tried to choke him with it. I didn't use my asp on no one. He did tell you he was a heroin dealer. He said the people he's selling to have taken two police officers hostage. Does that justify it? Justify what? Me beating him up? Is that what you think of me now? Does that justify his injuries? Excuse me. I think the question is, is he fit to be interviewed? I mean, he might very well have vital information on two missing officers. And two suspects who shot a man dead. He's in no fit state. Two police officers' lives are at risk. The doctor was very clear. He's seriously ill. Maybe you should have thought about that before you put him in here. Now, if you don't mind... Oh. 
Sit down. Use that hand cross to fix them to the loop. You did it. Come on. What do we do now? How long are we here for? We need to make some calls about passports. What do we need passports for? Because you shot your old man, you brought these two in the middle of a drugs deal, and had to shoot someone to save your skin. I had to bring them, I had to, after what happened. It didn't just happen, Greg. You screwed up! Now, I can't go back to Manchester and you can't stay here. Don't you get it? You made this mess. I could walk away, but I'm trying to look after you. That's why we need passports. Where are we going? I don't know. Europe. But that ain't your problem. You need to do exactly as I tell you. And let me do the thinking now, yeah? Where in Europe? Greg, let's get the stuff out of the car. Well, we're not going to Europe. In fact, we're not going anywhere. Look, the last sign I saw said Ilford. There's no signal. Hey, give it to me. Please be careful. Yeah, yeah. Where's it, Carver? Pick up. Gambling with your life now, Carver. No calls out. Off. You're a drunk, degenerate gambler, Carver. And whatever you go, whatever you do, that's what you'll always be. He's filth, June. One good swing at him, I'll soon bring him down to size. Hey, hey. Tomorrow, yeah, or whenever we get out of here, you're going to look back on this and say, well, that was one hell of a last day. If we get out of here, not when we get out of here. If we get out of here. We've now got an index for the vehicle, so we're out searching for it, all right? Don't worry. We'll find out. Mom. Well, thanks. Searching for the vehicle. What's that mean on a percentage basis? Twenty? Five? One percent chance they'll be seen? In a situation like this where they know they're wanted, it's low. But they'll be panicking, so we could get lucky. I'm no good at this. Well, no one is, Rod. June is. She's the most patient person I know. Well, that's good. She won't do anything rash. You went out with her, didn't you? Briefly. I know this might sound like a weird thing to say, Rod, but June has the experience and the personality to be the perfect hostage. Morning. When I get you the photos and you scan them in, how long does it take for the finished passports? It's all true. We're still in the warehouse in deeper Stilford. I need a pee. Well, so, well, I'll get you the photos and wait. We've got to do something, June. We've got to get to work on them. Well, Greg's the weakest one. Oi! Greg! Greg! The lady needs a pee! If it was an accident, don't you want to know he's all right? I mean, I know Hadley's looking after you now, but... You've only got one dad, haven't you? It's in there. Keep the door unlocked. The, uh, the way you're behaving now makes me wonder if it really was an accident. I told you. He grabbed the gun. I didn't even pull the trigger. Well, someone did. He did, when he tried to take the gun. You think I wanted this to happen? He wasn't even meant to be there. Still went ahead and robbed him, though. No, I took the money, but I didn't rob him. He was always meant to get that back. He still will. How? Well, when you sell the drugs? How does that work if you're off to Europe? Just has to. So what made you hook up with Burns, Pat? He's not the fizziest drink in the fridge. You don't get to choose who they put you with inside. Ah, but he's young. And I know how he gets away from the missus. Yeah? Want to tell me about it? I never went that way myself, Carver, but if you did, in your time of loneliness, I'm all ears. 
I'm not judging you, Parrot. I'm just trying to understand. So what is it then? Some kind of master pupil kind of thing? You know, school of cock-ups? Because one look at your previous says you never worked with a partner. So what's so different about him? He's loyal. Well, like a pet. I get it now. How's your own boy, Pat? Joey, isn't it? Is he still not talking to you? Tell me something, Carver. Is that her? Is she the one you ran away up north to get away from? Thought so. You made a right mess of them, I can tell you. You was all over the shop. You nearly had me up there, didn't you? You just weren't together enough. Too drunk. I'm gonna take the car, get some grub, see if we made the papers. Don't undo them. Not for anything. Gone, Greg. Now's your chance to make that phone call. Find out if your dad's okay. Do you think I'm stupid? They'll trace the phone. No, Greg. I don't think you're stupid. No, but Hadley does. He thinks you're stupid enough to trust him. Why shouldn't I? And why should you? More to the point. You've seriously messed things up for him. Hadley's a loner, Greg. He never has a partner. He does now. Not for long. He always ditches them. He's going now. What on earth makes you think he's going to come back? Because he will, because he's left the money and the smack on the table. I'm still there, you see? Still there. That's good, Greg. Trust is good. Right, and the number called at 2050. Who's that registered to? Right, thank you. Gov. Rifat Solman made a call ten minutes before the shooting to a pay-as-you-go mobile registered to a George Bush address, Grosvenor Square. American Embassy. Yes, hilarious. But could it be Pat Hadley? You know, to set the meeting, to make final arrangements or whatever? Check it out. Will do. I don't know nothing about no shooting. Mr Solomon, I've already informed you that I'm not going to be questioning you about the shooting. I'll do that when you're released. I'm here to question you about your cousin, who was found at the scene. Now, I have to tell you, we have witnesses who put you and your cousin there, and they've given us a description. I also know that your cousin has formed for heroin dealing. Now, we picked you up ten minutes after the incident, and you were half a mile away. Yeah, well, then they must have made a mistake. Sorry, the dead man is your cousin. Yeah, and I feel bad for my aunt, but that don't mean I was there. You do want us to catch the man who shot your cousin? Was it Pat Hadley? I wasn't there, so I don't know. Do you know Pat Hadley? I know a lot of people. Maybe I know him, I don't know his name. Your phone records show that you called a mobile register to a George Bush at 8.50. Now, we know that's an alias. A what? A fake name. Was it Pat Hadley? I don't remember calling no one. This number here. You called that number at 8.50. Pat? That's my cousin's number. That's his. The dead man. Yeah. I told you, my cousin. Lewis. Did he help you? No, he refused to. I mean, he could have done, but he won't. Can you tell me what's wrong with Lewis? I was really impressed with the way he dealt with Rudy yesterday. And now this. Well, he fancies you. That's what's wrong with him. What? Well, he likes you. A lot. Well, he's got a funny way of showing it. People are fun, aren't they? Oh, uh, if you don't believe me, what about your brother? Why do you think Lewis was prepared to go the extra mile for it? Do you love Rod June? Yes. When you do a 12-step program, Alcoholics Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous, whatever, one of the steps you take is to make amends. Yes, I know, but you're only supposed to make amends if it does more good than harm. That's right. I came back to give you your money. What? You won't believe the overtime I worked. But I've got the final amount, plus interest. Jim, that's nearly 20 grand. Do you mean it? Of course I do. It's what I do that counts, not what I say. 
it's amazing. <laughs> but I don't need the interest. But I need to give it to you. And I need to give it to you before you're married, because, to be honest, I don't like the idea of giving it to him. Oh. Now, maybe that's out of order, but it's true. I think about you all the time. Partly because I work all the time and the money's for you. But partly because I still love you. I'm not going to pretend that I'm not grateful for the money because I am, but... As for the rest of it, it's too late. When you left, I made a decision to go forwards, not backwards. I'll go forwards with you, June. I'll go anywhere for you. Minchin Hampton. It's a village near Stroud. A lot of the villages are in the valley where the wool trade was based, but our house, it's on a rise. So it gets the view. Sounds nice. Damn Jim Cobb. If he hadn't come back, none of this would have happened. It's not Jim's fault, Rod. It's police work. And June loves her job. You think I don't know that? I do. And I know how much she's giving up by retiring. But here, now, do you really believe that him showing up when we're about to get married, do you really believe that's just coincidence? Whether it's coincidence or not, Jim didn't kidnap her. No. I know what you're saying. But I also know that Jim Carr was bad for her past, present and future. Oh, come on, June. All your working life, you've been a copper. Dealing with the unexpected every day. I can understand. Lively at work, safe at home, but safe, safe. So what are you suggesting? That I have an unstable relationship to balance my quiet retirement? No, I think there's a part of you, a part you don't like to admit to, that wants that bit extra. Why did you come with me to Burns' yard? <laughs> no, you know, what makes you think that you've got that bit extra and Rod hasn't? I don't hear you telling me he does. When you left, you just left. I was the one who was prepared to give it another go, but you walked away. So I, I don't have to answer to you anymore, Jim. When I went away, I went away knowing that I would come back. I have spent two years, June, cleaning my side of the street. And there's one thing that I have realised is... I don't want to be there on my own. I want to be there with you. And what about me? What about what I want? That is your call. Totally. In my head, I want you to want something exciting. Not something out of a catalogue, not something all predictable and planned but something we make up as we go along by doing it together. And if I didn't say this to you, what I really feel, I know I would regret it forever. What are you two witching on about? Sit down. And you, sit down. Excuse us. CID have got a lead on the arrest we made. Well, what is it? Well, Solomon made a call before the shooting to the dead man's phone, but the dead man didn't have it at the scene. D.I. Nixon, she thinks it might have been in the car. Well, as long as they've not chucked it or taken the battery out, we can trace that. Well, she's getting onto the service provider now. The phone's stationary. Now, the mask that's picking it up is in the Ilford area. Great, fax is through. This is a map of the position of the mast and a distance radius based on the position of the other mast in the area that could be picking it up but for some reason aren't. Right, get out in the hospital, see if Bruce can analyze again. Right. Mr. Burns, does Greg have any contacts near Ilford? There was a place the driver spoke about, a yard to park the rigs in. Where's that? Mm. Hill Green. Did we write the papers? Don't know. Have a look. Do we get something to eat? I'll give them some grub. 
And I'll need your driving license. The passport guy needs it for the photo. I reckon I'll be about two hours. Well, it looks like you were right. This time he did come back. He's off again now, though, isn't he? You going now? Yeah. What's that? What does it look like? That's the money. Well done, Einstein. Well, the money stays. I need it for the passports. My dad got shot because of that money. It's not going out of my sight. You don't trust me. I'll take the money I need and leave the rest. And do me a favour. Put the gun away. When the trust goes, it goes both ways. You don't trust me, I can't trust you. You've been whispering in his ear, Carver. Get him! You're an idiot, Greg! You just had to do as you were told. If you try to show some initiative, all goes wrong. Get down! See what you've made me do? Now, I am on my own. And the only way to make that work is to kill the lot of you. We can't find it anywhere. Hill Green, yes. Mum. There, yeah, I've got it. It's Mill Green Industrial Estate, not Hill Green, north of Ilford. There. How did you figure that out? I Googled it. You're a diamond, Nicky. Time to grow up, Greg. You can't say we didn't warn you. Can you move? No. Can you move enough to get over here so that I can untie you? I can do better than that. I've got the key to the handcuffs. In my pocket. Which pocket? This one. It's me. Which one? This one. Uh, about half an hour. The and it's just the one possible. I need to do this properly. We need a plan. A plan? Yeah. I'll call him over, then I'll batter him. That's the plan. That's Hadley. We have a visual on the suspect in the doorway. Right, are we still going ahead as plan, Gaff? Indian R9 did a fly pass. They confirmed the heat sources of four people. I don't know we're here, so we've got the element of surprise. CO19 should go straight in, but I want us to get a visual to make sure they're still there. And then why don't I try and go round the side, see if I can take a look from there, and if I get a visual, I'll tell you. All right, confirm it with CO19, but you're not armed, so they have to cover you. Go. I'll call Hadley over, and when he's close enough, I will go for the gun. You go for his face. I want to know when to go. When I say Joey, that means get ready. What about me? You stay where you are. So just come in. Three's a crowd. Ready? Oi! Hadley! Time. waiting for? What am I waiting for? Because I can. I decide who. And I decide when. You make sure you think of your son when you pull that trigger, Pat. Did you talk about Joey, Greg? The one who hates him? You want to be first? Fine by me. <laughs> He decides nothing, Hadley. Nothing. That's enough, Jim. Jim, I've got 
time. Winded. Take oh. breath. Greg Burns is in there. Oh, 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 Do you want? We're a bit busy. I feel bad about what happened. I wanted to catch you as soon as possible, explain myself, see if we can sort this all out. No, there's nothing to sort out. I'm a nurse, Lewis. We have patients, you have suspects. It's just a different perspective, that's all. Right, well, we found our colleagues with what Solomon told CID. Are they OK? Yeah, and he decided to drop his charges against me as well. I'm glad. The doctor could have backed you up anyway. His swellings had gone down, and his injuries don't look like gas marks. You know, if that's an apology, I accept. Reg told me something at the hospital. Will you say thank you to him? You know what I mean? I don't know what it is. He just helped me see what was right in front of me. I appreciate what you did for Rudy yesterday. If you were to put some time in, you might even get into your sister's good books. Yeah, maybe. But not that. That's why I'd be doing it or anything. Mm. See you later. Thank you. Right, well, we need to sort out who gets what. Adley will face kidnapping and murder charges down here. But you're like in Manchester, might want him for the rest of it. That's between you and my governor, sir. He's banged up. Mission accomplished. Greg, I thought you might like to know, amazingly enough, your dad's going to be OK. You will tell them it was an accident, won't you? I'll tell them what you told me, but I will also tell them that you gave us the key. Thank you. No, thank you. Whatever else you may have done, if you hadn't given us the key, I might not be here. June, when have you got change? Can I see you in my office? Uh, if it's about my statement, sir, could I do it later? Just a quick debrief. We'll take a minute. Pick you up. <laughs> Give another one. Anyway, here's the future. Your future. Thank you. The future. Your future. Um, in their wisdom, uh, my colleagues have chosen me to say a few words. No, you just drew the short straw, mate. <laughs> um, I'm not very good at making speeches, and I'll be preaching to the converted anyway. But uh, well, we couldn't let your retirement pass without some kind of ceremony. We've all got Sergeant Ackland stories. In fact, some of us have been around long enough to have PC Ackland stories. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell him any of those. Not until I'm really drunk. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> but what I am going to say will be obvious to all of those that have worked with you. You have authority, which has got nothing to do with rank. And integrity that the rest of us could set our compasses by. I remember you bought me a compass once. Yeah, I did. When you tried to leave the first time. I want that back, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but the... Uh, the important thing that I really want to say is that you're the genuine article, June, and you always have been. And proof of that is the affection of everyone that's around you right now. You can't buy respect, and you've got that and much, much more here. I guess um, what I'm trying to say is that that's what matters most. You're respected and you're loved, and we're going to miss you. June Ackland. June Ackland. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, 
Can you make sure she gets this? It's important. Sure. you, Jim. But not in the way you want me to, not anymore. I didn't want you to go without saying goodbye. You're right. You have changed. That's what you wanted. <laughs> yeah, but you still want that adrenaline rush. You still want to take those risks, and I don't. Yes, you do, June. Yes, you do. No, you took that right to the wire today. Hadley could have shot that boy before you did anything. But he survived, and so did we. Yeah, it was dangerous, but it was exciting. I felt alive with you by my side. You know, maybe that's what was wrong. You know, if, if I bring that out in you, if I make you make sacrifices and take risks, then that's not good. That's not what I mean. But it's what I mean. And it's what's wrong with our relationship. I'm not good for you, Jim. And you're not good for me. There was a moment back there when we were about to jump Hadley and I thought, if I get this wrong, I might die. And all I could see was Rod's face. I love him, Jim. He's the one I want to be with. Decorating still to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But all that country here, yeah, trees. She said she's keen. Yeah, that'd be nice. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Yeah. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Uh, so, what about some of these stories you're saving up to? Pull me another one. I'm not drunk enough yet. Roger, he's his youngsters, mate. What is going on? <laughs> Let's go. This is for you. This is your party. Oh, it's, sorry to interrupt. Jim, um, I'm really gonna miss you. I need Tony and I out in the old days. Don't worry, Reg. I'll be back for your leaving, dear. <laughs> Please, let's go. I can't bear to say goodbye to all these people. Okay. Someone just told me Sergeant Ackland delivered a baby in the cells. Is that right? Yeah, she did. What was it a boy, girl? Girl. I delivered a girl after that road accident, remember? Yeah, how can I forget? No, I think they named it after her. <laughs> Sergeant Acklin, that's a weird name for a baby. June, you plonker. Called her June. the bill. One casualty as a result of an RPC. So you knew you was going to hit her, but you could do nothing about it. It was like everything was in slow motion. You might remember me as DC Nixon, Priory Road. Seven years ago, I investigated your husband in that security van robbery. Gotcha. Will Tony win Helen back? Will the angry husbands catch Tim? And is it time for Felix to pack his bags? There's a lot more to come in bonkers next. That's followed by a trip to the beach and a life-changing decision for the Oracle in Benidorm at 10.